This is Greece. The place where the hairpins are so tight the cars barely fit through them, where the roads are surrounded by rocks that will throw your vehicle in all directions at the slightest touch, and where the gravel is so loose that even Monte Carlo's ice roads have more grip. Speaking of grip, the alignment for this location looks like this. 0.6 toe out for the front wheels to increase the vehicle's turning, this way navigating those tight corners will be a piece of cake and 1.2 toe in for the rear wheels for faster corner drive outs. Now for the camber, since here in Greece there are tons of hairpins and tight turns, you will need a medium high camber value for the front wheels to combat the deformations the tires experience. On the rear, since these wheels are only facing forward, they're not pivoting left and right to steer the car as the front ones do, the camber value can be lower. In the differential step, I already know what some of you guys might say, and that is too much driving and braking lock. Yeah, it may look like that, but 80% of the time I was grinding this map, I ran with the dips one pip open than the values you see here, and I can say I was kinda struggling to get the car to break and get enough traction where I needed. So after I gave them one increment of lock and settled on these values, I instantly got a few seconds faster on each sector. So if you feel too much understeer, no problem, we all have different driving styles, just open them up one pip and see how it goes. But these are the values that I recommend. For the damping, since this location doesn't have jumps or any big bumps, crests or deep ditches like in Finland for example, the dampers don't have to be soft. For the slow bump, letting the value at zero will do the trick. Fast bump on plus one on the stiffer side and the bump division at 0.26 so the ride will feel as linear as possible for the entire race. Finally, the rebound can be set at minus one on the softer side, so if the car tends to lift off the ground, the damper will not resist extension too much and the wheels will stay in contact with the road. Hey, did you know that Nox has started memberships on his channel? Oh wow, so what? I mean, it has an offer like never seen before. Mm -hmm. No, really, you can ask for customized tuning setups. Wait, what? Yeah, if you sign up as chief engineer, you can tell him the location and the car you're struggling with and he will make you a tuning setup just for you and help you with any other adjustments. No way! Plus, you will get early access to WRC1 and WRC2 setups before they make it to YouTube and a growing collection of tuning setups for various cars in various locations. But this is also included for the engineer level, right? Yes, you're right. So, what you waiting for? Braking force and brake bias are one of the most important things to set up right because they allow you to play with the car center of mass before and during corners. Now high values for the braking force are not the way to go on loose surfaces like dirt, gravel or snow because the wheels will lock more easily and sliding under braking means no braking at all. That's of course if you play with the ABS assist turn off. Since the weight of the car is transferred more to the front during braking, the brake bias has to be set more to the front wheels as they develop more grip during this phase. The handbrake force here can be set a little bit higher than in other locations to assist you with those hairpins and tight corners. So you can rotate the car as quickly and on a short radius as possible. Don't forget to clutch kick here from time to time if you feel the engine stalling. Getting out of those hairpins as fast as possible is a must, so you need to set the gearbox for acceleration rather than speed. Start by lowering the final drive, which will lower all the other gears linear, and from there adjust each gear individually to better fit the chosen track. So for example, here I lengthen the fifth gear just enough, so that on the longest straight from this track, my speed won't be limited by the engine's RPM and I can accelerate all the way before the first turn where I need to slam the brakes. In the spring tab, you need to set the ride height at the maximum value, because as mentioned in the intro, there are rocks everywhere, so you want to be as far away from them as possible. Plus, you want to take advantage of the very few cuts that you can take here and there, which involve getting over rough terrain and sharp dirt bumps. As I said in the damping tab about the road surface, the same principle applies here too. The spring rate doesn't need to be set too soft, this way offering a more responsive and stable ride. To absorb as much body roll and have the car stay as planted as possible while cornering, a stiffer anti-roll bar setting is needed. Don't worry about the high ground clearance, because the surface grip is not that high and the turns are slow, so the likeliness of tipping over is reduced. On faster tracks with fast corners, yes, this can become a problem. This is another location added to the collection of setup guides, so give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this one. Join the club on Racenet if you wanna compete in the championship and come for a chat on the Discord server, as for driving tips, shared moments and more. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track, bye bye!